Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regame Intercom video, we're going to be tackling two news stories today of the technology variety, of course. The first of which is AMD's Threadripper 1950X CPU. Performance benchmarks have leaked out to the internet, so we're going to be perusing those and trying to see how they stack up against Intel's current, latest, and greatest. And then we're going to move over to AMD's Vega, specifically on a piece of news that Vega architecture has seen some improvements when it comes to DirectX 12 support, so we'll go into that in just a moment. But we'll start out with the Ripper of Threads, which is, of course, the X399 platform from AMD. The top-end CPU is the 1950X, sporting 16 cores, 32 threads, and 64, count them, 64 PCIe 3.0 lanes, and, of course, quad-channel memory support. Because this is a high-end desktop, Product, of course, this is aimed at video editors, content creators, and so on. According to the leak specifications via the benchmark, we are looking at a chip which has a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz, which isn't too bad considering the sheer number of cores which are, of course, on an offer. But enough of that, let's talk about the performance itself. So there are a couple of interesting entries, although one of them has now since been deleted, um, and that was back last year. The newest one, however, which is known as AMD Whitehaven, I'll put that on screen, has a, a date, the upload date of July the 5th. Now what's interesting about this is the single uh, core score was 4,074 multi-core score, uh, hits 26,768, which is fairly impressive. Do remember that these CPUs are not, you know, released yet. They are still probably working on the BIOS and so on. But what's very interesting, at least in my opinion, is that if you do a bit of Googling and do check out the older benchmark, you can see that the older benchmark, which was released June the 13th, so, you know, a couple of weeks back, just over a couple of weeks back, about three weeks back, actually, um, hit 4,167 on the single thread performance, so about 100 points difference, but the multi-core score went up considerably. It has about 2,200 points more, so the, the old one was 24,539 compared to 26,768. A slight caveat, however, comes from the memory. So while the sheer amount of memory here, because this is a geek bar, a geek bench, excuse me, benchmark, so memory is not the most intensive in terms of the amount of memory, but one slight difference is it has 32 gigabytes of memory running at 1198 megahertz reported, whereas on the other hand, the previous benchmark, the one from June the 13th, Geekbench um, reports the memory at 1065 megahertz. If we were to do a quick comparison um, of the 7900X, which I guess is about the fairest CPU we can compare it with from Intel, because obviously they're very high-end chips, you know, the, the 16 and 18 cores have not been released yet, so we can't compare it against those. But what we can do is have a very quick look at uh, Geekbench 4 with the 7900X. You can do a quick you know, search yourself. Obviously, the results do vary depending on the clock speed that's being used. However, taking the mid point, in other words, the non-optimized, you know, non-high score, because ultimately if you take the very top score, it's probably with someone who's either overclocked the rest of the system, has really tweaked the BIOS and all of the other bits and pieces, and of course these are retail BIOSes. So for the sake of this, I'm going to say we'll take the second page. Um, and still, the scores are noticeably higher. So single core score is around the 5,500 mark with the multi score core score, that's not easy to say, at around the 35-ish thousand. I say around because some are slightly lower, some are slightly higher. If I had to take a guess, we are looking at a couple of scenarios. The first is this is a synthetic result. Second, and probably the most obvious, is that, well, Threadrip is not released yet. And the third is that Intel do have a clock speed advantage. So evidently, in some applications, the additional memory bandwidth, sorry, the additional clock frequency will definitely play into a uh, considerable role. But one thing that is definitely a plus for Threadripper, at least according to the rumors, is that it's going to be noticeably cheaper 
than Intel. So, for example, with the Intel i9-7900X, with just 10 cores and 20 threads, I say just, of course, in a very loose manner, but it comes with a retail price of a thousand US dollars, whereas the 7960X is going to cost around 1700 US dollars, and the very high-end chip, which has 18 cores, 36 threads, those are going to cost you two thousand US dollars per pop, and I don't know the clock speeds for those because they have not been finalized yet. So your guess is as good as mine. So it's possible anyway that the 7960X might actually have lower single thread performance than say the 7900, at least at base, because the clock speeds aren't as aggressive. Obviously, I'm making speculations there. I don't know for certain because unfortunately, Intel have not given me a board with a 79. 80XE CPU to test it with because, well, they're not released yet for one. The other advantage with the X399, so Intel, uh, uh, AMD's platform rather, not Intel's platform, is that all graphics, all, all of the CPUs have 64 PCIe lanes, and as we've discussed up teen number of times by now, uh, the number of PCIe lanes of the X series does not have that. So, for example, even the 7900X only has 44 PCIe lanes, the 7820X only has uh, 28 PCIe lanes, and that's kind of a downer. But, next topic tackles Vega from a very different way than normal. So, RX Vega, I don't feel I need to introduce it, but I will very briefly, is the successor in many ways to Polaris, and it features an iteration of GCN, in other words, a higher GCN number, although it's not a small tweak. There are considerable differences in the GCN um, 5 architecture compared to GCN 4. That's one of the reasons that uh, AMD are calling this the largest jump in GCN architecture since it was originally released. But, anyway, enough of that. While there are a lot of questions regarding the performance of RX Vega, which once again, of course, is the gaming performance, as uh, a gaming focused uh, graphics card, if you to take a look at the DirectX 12 feature set of RX Vega, so there are a couple of differences. Primarily, however, it comes down to conservative rasterization and rasterized order of views. So essentially, previously, Older versions of GCN, for example, Polaris, does not even support it. it. It literally doesn't support it at all. Now, this is no longer the case. With Vega Plus, we're looking at full tier 3 support, which is actually the highest number that is currently um, in the DirectX 12.1 specification. And just for sake of comparison... It's actually higher than NVIDIA currently supports with the Pascal architecture, which is Tier 2. I do wonder if things like this are actually one of the reasons that Vega has not been performing as well as possible. We have discussed some rasterization issues with Vega previously, but the fact of the matter is that if previous versions of Vega didn't actually support this, uh, sorry, previous versions of DCN, GCN, excuse me, did not support this, and now of course it does, it probably needs to be baked into the driver's set. And according to Raj Akadori, that is no small feat. In a nutshell, conservative rasterization allows a more accurate but performance-intensive solution. And it allows you to basically figure out whether polygons cover part of pixels or not. So, while this is probably not as exciting to some of you as say, hearing about DirectX 12's multi-threading or the fact that it's close to the metal or any of those other buzzwords were going around a couple of years ago, it is also incredibly helpful to games developers in certain instances. So, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I'd like to thank Joe very much for the message regarding the Vega news and DirectX 12 support. And other than that, I will bid you all farewell. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.